Hello. Today we're looking at my 2014 Triumph Daytona 675R. So really quick in case you don't know what this bike is, this is a 675cc inline triple super sport motorcycle. It's a British bike and we're going to talk a little bit about it today. So I got this bike back in September. Um, it's a 2014 model. I bought it in 2015 so I got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, it was out of commission for about a month because it had an electrical issue. So then I got it back in the end of October-ish. Yeah, like right around Halloween. And then I've had it up till now with no more issues on it. So yeah, I've had it for a cumulative amount of four months now. Um, so I think it's fair for me to, to review it. Um, the bike is completely stock, except for a fender eliminator kit that I've put on it. Kind of cleaned up the rear. So yeah, let's get into it. So why did I choose a Daytona, right? There's plenty of other options out there. Uh, in terms of the 600 to the middleweight class, you got R6, you got the ZX6, the 636, the Kawasaki. Uh, you have Ducati, also a very premium, awesome brand. Um, so why did I choose the Triumph? So, a couple reasons. The first, and honestly the most important to me, I absolutely love the way this bike looks. Um, to me, it's important that it looks cool. Um, I really, really love that it looks like a really, really awesome bike. The sound that it makes, uh, it's a very unique triple cylinder sound. You don't really get that with the regular Japanese bikes. It's very unique, it's very cool. And third, one of the coolest things about this bike is that its power band is incredibly linear. Um, I'll put up two graphs really quick uh, comparing the dyno of an R6 and the dyno of the 675. Uh, you'll notice that not only does the Daytona have way more torque pretty much across the entire power band, uh, it also comes on way earlier. So this bike in the lower and the mid range, right around like six to 10,000 revs, it pulls so nicely and linearly. It's got a really, really good amount of torque. When you get on the throttle, it surges forward like with just really nice linear progression. So here's what I mean about the torque. Uh, we're in fourth gear right now at 6,000 revs. And as soon as you just lay into the throttle, it just surges forward. It really just like pulls forward. That's fourth gear at 6,000. The power is there all the time. I've never encountered a situation where I felt like power was lagging on the spike. Any rev you're in, any gear, any time, there's always power there. Obviously, there is a huge bump in power when you get to the top end, like, I mean, Jesus Christ, sometimes I go out to the twisty roads, and instead of being in fourth gear, I maybe we'll try third gear out of a corner, and that's around like 10,000 uh, RPMs. <laughs> it's insane how hard it pulls out of the corner. It's just really crazy because you'll be riding and then you'll just roll on all the way and crack it all the way open. It it feels like a missile. It's nuts. It really is great having that extra bump in CCs compared to the 600 class just because you get that extra bit of torque and the way the triple kind of is designed it has just this really nice characteristic to it. So that's one of the reasons that it was very very appealing to me. It's a really hardcore bike. Uh, it has one of the most aggressive ergonomics out of any motorcycle that I've seen. Uh, I looked at uh, cycleergo.com or whatever you can really tell that uh, it has a really, really high perched, like gargoyle-esque appearance to it. That was really appealing to me because I do want to take this bike out to the track someday. Which brings me to my next point, which is that this is the R version. So this comes with the quick shifter and the Olin's suspension for like a thousand dollars extra. Which to me, I don't understand why you wouldn't get this bike in the R version just from a value point like the thousand dollars is worth the forks and the rear uh, shocks alone so I don't know why you'd ever go with the non R version unless money was a super huge constraint which brings me to its unfortunate con uh, this bike is very expensive for a motorcycle I don't want to say exactly how much I paid for it but you can look up the, the, the typical average prices I got a really good deal on it for what it is because I've got a 2014 model in 2015 that never sold so they were really trying to get rid of it but at the same time, you know, 
fuck. Like, I, I look at some of the prices for, like a, like, a 2012 R6, and I'm like, wow, that's half of what I paid for this bike. Fuck. But... To me, it's my dream bike. It's totally worth it to have it. I really, I really wouldn't have gotten any other bike if I had the choice. I, I would still get this bike every time, every time. So yeah, once you get adjusted to uh, how the ergonomics are on this motorcycle, it's really not that bad. If you're, if you're a young guy like myself, like I'm 23, if you are between the ages of, you know, 20 to 29, like to up to you in the 35 range, like I'd say you really shouldn't have any issues riding this bike every day. I ride this bike every day that I can. Ride it to work, ride it around town. The only time I don't ride it is to go get groceries, which I use my car for that, so that's nice. But yeah, honestly, um, you really shouldn't have any issues with the ergonomics on it. It's really not so bad. Oh, another point I wanted to make, uh, given that it is so aggressive and just so, like, tightly put together, uh, one of the things you notice on this bike compared to other bikes is just how insanely quick to turn in it is. Just how, just, it darts back and forth so easily. This bike is really, really narrow for a super sport. Um, I've sat on an R6 and a 636. I, I've even looked at a ZX-10 just to kind of like look at it, kind of looking at it, you know. This bike is super small for what it is, which I really like. It has a, a Miata-esque characteristic to it of being like just this really tidy package of a, of a motorcycle. The quick shifter is super great around town just because you don't really have to think about shifting up the gears. And you still get the really fun downshifts because you still have to pull in the clutch. So I think the quick shifter is such a cool addition on this bike. The fuel economy, I guess, like if you really care about that kind of stuff, I mean, if you're riding a super sport, you probably don't give a fuck about the fuel economy, but it actually is not so bad. Um, I average about 45 miles to the gallon on this bike, which compared to the R3 I used to have is kind of stupid, like, because I used to get like 80 on that bike, but, you know, this is a, this is a tuned machine. It makes 128 horsepower out of 675 cc, so what do you really expect, you know? It revs to 14,400 RPMs really not going to get the best uh, gas mileage it's it's a really great bike um i'm trying to think of cons but honestly for what i use it for there really is no con to it um it's it's perfect to me it is really fun owning a more exotic bike i get a lot of questions and comments on it everywhere i go um usually from old guys they're like oh that's a sweet bike i'm like thanks they're like what is it i'm like oh it's a, it's a triumph it's a daytona they're like i've, I've never heard of that and i'm like that's really cool like i like being exclusive like that yeah they, they especially get like even more confused i'm like oh yeah, it's a triple they're like what a triple like huh that doesn't make sense one of the unfortunate downsides and i guess this comes with owning any super sport bike um this tire or this bike does eat up tires like crazy i'm on my third set of tires already i think on that like uh i think 8,000 miles on it so granted one of them i got a flat and i just decided to change it anyways um but the sps that it come with don't last at all like at all this bike's also really great for cruising on the highway um given the fact that it has more torque than most 600s it feels like a leader bike on the highway um from what i've understood and been told i've never ridden a leader bike so don't chew me out for that um it feels really really torquey it never feels like you're, you're really lagging anywhere it doesn't feel like you have to squeeze its brains out to to really get it going um you just you just roll in the throttle in fifth or sixth gear and it just goes. Overall, if you're in the market for a super sport, you really can't go wrong with the Daytona. It's a bit pricey, I'm not gonna lie. Getting getting the, the 675R, I've seen really good deals on the, on the last gen for, for this generation with a bit more power, the better suspension and all that other stuff. Um, it's a bit pricey. You're probably gonna be paying like upwards of $9,000 for it, which is a lot for a bike. But I mean, if you're out for performance, if you're out for just this really linear bike if you just want something that's just gonna make you smile every time you're on it get the Daytona you just you can't go wrong you really can't it's such a good bike oh, I've been